but uh, I joined the Department of Microbiology as a resident in 1985 after completing my MBBS from uh, Allahabad Medical College. And then I did MD from BHU, PhD from BHU in 2002. And then I have been awarded the Fellow of National Academy of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And then uh, right now my uh, impact factor are 48 and total citation is around 10,000. And uh, most of the work I'm doing nowadays on the uh, bacteriophage therapy. So you can see uh, there is a huge list of the antimicrobials which were first time started uh, de developing after the invention of penicillin in 1928 and after several round of work and the all testing done preclinical and clinical studies the penicillin mm -hmm. molecule was introduced to the uh, uh, clinical practice in 1940 but by the time it was introduced in 1941 or 42 the resistance appeared and then there was a huge addition of the different molecules which are able to kill because of the differential metabolic process from the mammalian cells means human cells but bacteria are quite smart and they have developed the uh, different mechanism by which they can take care of all these uh, antibiotics so uh, i'm showing you a slide which i used to show to the my uh, medical uh, undergraduates and mm -hmm. postgraduates and just to make them understand that what is the mechanism of action of the different antibiotics so see this is the bacterial cell wall and you can see this is the cytoplasm this is the metabolic process which is going on the black colored one is the cytoplasmic membrane this greenish color is the cell wall and then this is the dna synthetic machinery this is the messenger rna and this is the protein synthetic machinery so on the basis of the mode of action or site of action i have just classified the antibiotics and you can see one by one so this is first this is a mnemonic I made for my remembrance and you can see the cell wall is inhibited by beta lactams and you can see this cell C for carbapenems and cycloserine, W just transformation, W for vancomycin and new additions nowadays are the delbavancin and delaminid. This is being added to the treatment of the um, tuberculosis and also the uh, replacement of the vancomycin this is for the mrsa methicillin resistant staph aureus isoniazid you might be knowing i for this one is being used in mycobacterium tuberculosis infection and these are not antibiotics but they are inhibitors of the beta lactamases which are produced by the bacteria so they counter these enzymes so that the other enzymes like this uh, carbapenems and this penicillin cephalosporins become effective b is for basitracin this is beta lactam antibiotics the huge group of the antibiotics that uh, includes penicillin and cephalosporin and then e is for ethionamide ethambutal again another drug used in the uh, tuberculosis and then other lactams are the monobactams so next is the uh, you can see the uh, antibiotics which are acting on the cytoplasmic membrane the black one the inner cytoplasmic membrane by layer and the cytoplasmic membrane is inhibited by tripol. Tri is triazoles, polyene, polymyxin B, and polymyxin EL. This is called as cholestine. So basically, these are uh, active against the cell wall synthesis. And you know there is a little difference between the cell wall of the fungal agents and the mammalian cells, and also sometimes of the bacterial cell. So mostly mm -hmm. these antibiotics are acting on the fungal agents, and they are a bit toxic too. But we are not having any option other than this to use in the uh, the treatment of the fungal infection. Queen Mary act on DNA. Quinolones, Q for quinolone, M for metronidazole and ectromycin. These three drugs are acting on the DNA. And then R square acts on RNA. This is the rifampicin or rifabutin. Both these drugs are being used in tuberculosis. Then protein synthesis is inhibited at cmc ludhiana for each i have just made it the first at is the at working on the smaller segment of the uh, ribosome that is 30s a is for amnoglycosides which includes uh, gentamicin amicacin and uh, uh, there are so many mm -hmm. amnoglycosides streptomycin all those things are there then we have got the tetracycline group which includes the tj cycline tj cycline has been recently added to the our armamentorium then chloramphenicol earlier it was used for the treatment of typhoid fever 
and uh, it has been said that this may lead to bone marrow suppression so rarely being used in the human being macrolides are the nothing but the uh, you know the erythromycin and the azithromycin which was very largely used in the corona epidemics this is clindamycin and l is for lincomycin so with this uh, there are certain antibiotics which are uh, interfering the metabolic process. The, the subunits which are necessary for the synthesis of cell wall, they are being inhibited. They are called as anti-metabolites are taken, TDS. The medical prescriptions has TDS, BD like this. So I just made it. T is for trimethoprim, a component of septron or cotrimexagel. D is dapsone. This is used for the um, treatment of leprosy. And the other new addition is the direct pinolones and then sulfonamides. So what has what has happened? You just see, this is 1930, and I said you that the uh, penicillin was introduced somewhere here, and then you can see the majority of the newer molecules were invented before 80. So between these 40 years were very um, good for this one, and the invention of the antibiotics added 10 years more to the life expectancy of the human being. So that was great. But since we indiscriminately use this method, so later the, uh, the antibiotic resistance has developed and you know that many a times you are using the antibiotics and without any effect. And the, after uh, 1980, you can see only few molecules have been, new molecules have been added. This is important to tell you that the, uh, it takes around 20 years to introduce to the clinical practice if some new molecules are invented because all those steps you have to go for the preclinical, clinical one, two, three, four stages before being introduced. So what to do? Man thinks that they are very intelligent, but the man who is always wrong, bacteria are a lot smarter in quick and complex decision making than believed because they are multiplying very fast. So what is the definition of superbug? A strain of bacteria that is resistant to all antibiotics. So this boy is thinking that nothing to be worried because every dot has got its antidote. So every problem has got its solution. So let us think about the alternatives. And the alternatives are antimicrobial peptides. Nowadays, a lot of work is being done. Antimicrobial peptides are found in our circulation uh, uh, in serum. In general, the antimicrobial peptides are small molecules with a molecule mass of 1 to 5 kilodalton. Their structure usually contains elements that facilitate the interaction with negatively charged membrane and the, their mode of action involves the cell membrane of target target. Actually, this is the innate uh, type of uh, the uh, uh, antibacterial agent which is present in our body system, uh, circulatory system usually, and then we are trying to exploit by having the higher uh, amount of these antimicrobial peptides to deal with the uh, bacteria with the different mechanism than the antibiotics. Bactriocins, very well known, not new. Bactriocins are proteinaceous compounds, lethal to other bacteria than the protein bacteria. Because the warfare is going on everywhere in the soil and the water and one bacteria is killing another bacteria like Russia and Ukraine. So they are developing the, the, their counter and that's why they are not damaging themselves but they are damaging the other. These agents are called as bactriocins. Probiotics, very well known. Essential, essentially, probiotics are friendly bacteria that benefit the host. Just a few of many benefits that probiotics provide are promoting the absorption and production of vitamins, enabling the efficient inflammatory response. So they are not exactly antimicrobial agents, but they are just helping for the from, uh, growth of better uh, bacteria, which are giving certain <coughs> essential compounds and vitamins and the factors. Prebiotics are compounds in food that induce the growth or activity of beneficial microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. These are the compounds. They are not the living bacteria like probiotics. So they are nutritionally inactive, but they are inducing the growth and activity of beneficial microorganisms. They are called as prebiotics. So the next one is the bacteriophages, which I showed you in the first slide. They are bacterial eating uh, viruses. Phage are obligate intracellular parasites that multiply inside the bacteria by making use of some or all of the host biosynthetic machinery. You know, every living cell has got its virus. 
like human being has got viruses like coronavirus, HIV virus, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, mm-hmm. and adenovirus, parovirus, poliovirus. So there are innumerable number of the viruses are there. Likewise, the types of bacteria which are prevalent on this earth, every bacteria has got their viruses and they are called as bacteriophages. So uh, let us see the history of the development of bacteriophages. Uh, it starts from 1890 and then up to this place I shall be showing you that what has been done. So you, this was the basically Ernest Hanbury Hankin who first observed the phage activity against Vibrio cholerae in India itself. So he was the British doctor working at that time and he was placed uh, basically in Agra later on and he could see that the people who are staying at the bank of rivers Ganga and Jamuna were having the less severity of the cholera, less death and ne- less morbidity as well. While the people who were away from the river bank not consuming the river water, they were having the more moderate, more deaths and more disease severity and more number of mm-hmm. the cases. So he could uh, assume that there is something which is killing or reducing the number of the uh, bacteria in the gut. That's why they are being saved. And later on he proposed at that time there was no uh, electron microscope developed it was only compound microscope so the opponents said that this may be enzymatic activity because uh, after heating the activity was last so he did a lot of in vitro experimentation so this was the person Hanbury uh, again uh, from India itself this uh, petrophage research started and then it is said that this Gamela is, was the uh, person who also assumed that something is there which is inhibiting the growth of bacillus subtilis but not very much documented. Then uh, this uh, person Frederick Tart and the uh, D. Herrell, here he, he is D. Herrell, he was British and he, he is German. So there was the, the, you know, there was the competition between the two countries. So the Britishers wanted to give the, uh, the credit to Britishers one so they said that this person got the first time there was the clearing of the bacteria on the lawn culture it was true that he got this but he stopped his research there only but this fellow Felix D. Herald self-taught uh, microbiologist uh, only probably he was high school pass and then he learned by himself and then he basically may be called as the father of the bacteriophage research and then uh, you can see this is another uh, this one so there were so many people Eliva Institute in 1923 it was founded by Georgia Adieva who was later killed by the Russian army and then uh, there was a risk so he also fled Felix D. Herrell and D. D. Herrell conducted a lot of uh, clinical trials in India also and then uh, uh, then we are here the the bacteriophage therapy mm-hmm. went in uh, in in um, dark because the antibiotics were introduced du- during this period and there was no need of the identifying exactly bacteria whatever and because the antibiotics are usually broad spectrum so there was need no need of identification and the bacteria and antibiotics were working in, on all of them but they are basically smart bomb like things so they are strain specific so many times that was failing and easily available antibiotics were there so that was promoted but now again we are reverted back to the pre antibiotic era and we are bound to have the uh, different alternatives you see how to uh, process the um, we have to have the source of target pathogen we isolate them and then we have to have the source of uh, bacteriophages they are usually water and soil system we are making a lawn culture then we are putting the inactivated uh, this uh, uh, chloroform treated water or soil on the lawn and then the back they are sticking the phages present there they are sticking to the bacteria replicating and then we are harvesting and then bulk production is being done for clinical use so you can see this is our own bacteriophages they were electron microscopes at palam at himachal mm-hmm. uh, uh, pradesh long ago i think maybe 12 years ago this is the head and this is the tail and this is against the pseudomonas aeruginosa. Again, this is the larger picture of the same thing. This picture is later we have taken recently. And this is again a recent picture of the bacteriophages. You can say they are called as photoviridae. And then what, there are two types of the life cycle. One is lysogenic, another is the uh, lytic. And lysogenic cycle is lytic cycle where the viruses are entering like this 
replicating there, damaging or killing the bacteria after assembly. You see synthesis of viral genome and proteins and then the bacteria is getting uh, raptured mm -hmm. and the, all these progenies are coming out. So this is because they are lysing the bacteria, that's why this is called as lytic cycle. This is like this, you can see, and here a lot of progeny viruses are coming out. Then another is the lysogenic cycle where the bacteriophages are getting attached or incorporated in the genome of the bacteria and they are replicating at par with the replication of the genome of the bacteria and they are giving certain advantages to the survival of the bacteria like toxigenicity or protection, virulence factor, all those things are there. And these uh, basically these are the basic key factors for the evolution of the these bacteria and uh, you know we are the evolved from the bacteria itself from single cell structure up to this complex structure of human being because of this process only, lysogeny and mutations. And you can see when uh, we are having the viruses isolated, purified, then we go for the counting. This is called as soft agar overlay. And you can see these uh, small, small holes. These holes have been formed by the viruses which have lysed the bacteria in the surrounding area. If the number is more, then you can get higher number of these holes. They are called as plaques. And then if it is still increased, you can see number of plaques here clearing. And then if you are increasing the number more, the complete clearing of the plate is occurring there. So this is what we are doing. We are simply the, the uh, here I would like to emphasize that these phages are found in our body system, in our urine, in our feces, in our saliva, in blood circulation, but they are at very low number. When needed, we can increase the number of these phages and you can use for the therapy purposes or, uh, or, or safety of the food or cleaning of the water, etc. So this is simply the introduction of the bacteriophages how this started and where we are right now. So thank you very much uh, after this uh, first 20 minutes of the uh, talk and I shall be giving you the next one uh, about the chronic uh, wound mm -hmm. ulcer healing, the clinical trial which we have done. Thank you very much.